Hello and welcome to another video on my channel. My name is Miles Muddy. I make Minecraft Bedrock Edition content and today I have another binary decoder for you. So some of you may still remember this one and it's very broken right now. Uh, I just saw that, didn't realize that until I started recording. And well, it's very slow. Just look at it. I activated one zone. This light should switch on, but like it takes forever. And also it's pretty broken. Now I have another one for you. Now have a look at how fast this one is compared to the other one. Obviously it takes a bit, but there it is. And that's not only for one, it's for all of the numbers. They are all at this speed. And all that is thanks to this new layout that I'm using here. I basically got rid of all the pistons that were in this. So I did not come up with the rail thingy here so that they can go down and it doesn't power them. It wasn't my idea, it was the idea of a Minecraft Java Edition player. And I took that concept and made it work here and added some systems here and there to make it infinitely expandable and also make it work a bit better. So yeah, a link to that video will be in the video description. Now let's go to the 8-bit decoder because I think that's what you all want to see because the, what was it, 5-bit one is pretty boring. So let's just activate some numbers. I won't activate. I will just activate a random number for now. There you go, it's that one. And then in the end we can have a look. If it's actually correct, let's just activate all of them. And before I can actually go there and see if it actually worked, it's already activated. That's, I built it the way that you have 0 here, all the way to 63, and then here 64, and above that 128, and then um, 192, I think it is. Uh, calculating while recording is very bad. I mean, I knew the 128 one, but the 192 one... I didn't know that. And yeah. As I said, calculating something live on camera is not easy. So how does this work? Let me just quickly explain it to you on let's just use the 8-bit one. When I activate this here, it deactivates well, it deactivates that torch, so these torches here get activated, powering this line below. That's how I solved all the issues with you having to have comparators, uh, not comparators, I mean repeaters, on this redstone line. Because if you just have a look at that one right there, again, um, it's gonna take me a second to get there. It was always a bit weird to get all those in. Sometimes you could get it work, Sometimes you had to place those and then sometimes blocks to block it. And it just wasn't a really good solution to this, in my opinion. So I got rid of that using the second wire above. Then this here is the same concept as the other one in there. If there's a torch, then it gets deactivated if it's activated and if there's no torch then it gets activated if that one gets activated and everywhere where there is a torch so here you have to have the rail one block lower it will still power everything just normal but you have to have it one block lower so that it does not get powered by this wire here too only by the torch that's basically it already. And these observers here just detect the change and then 
go into a simple T flip flop, powering the lamps here. That's it. And for this one, I used one T flip flop, but if you want to have it infinitely expandable, no, not that one, you have to use at least two, or depends on how many bits you need in your decoder. Here I also added a simple system to make it spam proof. So here you can spam for as long as you want. And I don't know if the other ones are actually also spam proof. I don't think so, but yeah, I don't think that they are spam proof because of the T flip flops. It's safer to add one of those systems, but it of course also makes it bigger again which, well, you don't always want it. Then I also built this one, which has a bug, but uh, it's basically one with an RSNR edge down there, and you can select whatever you want. Then you press this one, and it activates it. And theoretically, you could not deactivate it, and it would just stay, but it also somehow activates all the other combinations with those lamps that were turned on, which is a bit weird. Anyway, that's pretty much it. If you do want a tutorial, like a block by block tutorial for this, then let me know down in the comment section. But I think it should all be understandable now. Oh yeah, one more thing, let me just explain this. So if there's a redstone torch here, that means that the wire needs to be turned on for that number to be displayed. That's pretty much it now. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you like this new binary decoder and this video in general. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.